a lot of general content's been covered here. Let me uh, also interject about uh, Batman's couple of cameos in there. What did oh, you yeah. think of Batman in it? It was pretty cool. I loved how you know he did show up from time to time. I thought it was going to be a bigger part in the movie, like in the um, Batman Assault and Arkham animated movie, but not so much in this one, which I thought was okay. And there's another Justice League character who has a cameo. I'm not going to say who that person is, but that was... Uh, pretty cool to see that absolutely and um it i will say involved another suicide squad member uh which for those who are you know comic knowledgeable that will probably be a big enough spoiler for you to know who we're talking about but um i i gotta say um while i really did like so much of this and uh you know am having a lot of trouble seeing what uh besides marveldickwriters.com and um funny rotten tomatoes yeah rotten tomatoes and the uh buddies club of hollywood currently uh has against dc um i really there were a couple things that i could you know actually see their points about um Seeing the Joker, I did like a lot about him, but personally, I felt he is still, at least for now, a couple steps down from Mark Hamill and Heath Ledger. It's hard for me to say personally which of those, in my perspective, I like the most, because I feel that Mark Hamill is so um, iconic for, you mm -hmm. know, the comic version, and Heath Ledger is such a good real-life Joker you could see being an actual person well was yeah <laughs> what about uh jack nicholson he's good too but i would i think it's going to be between him and um uh jay leto for um jared leto jared leto excuse me mm, okay uh for you know the uh title yeah like that joker yeah i liked how there was a photo comparison of the you know different people who played the Joker, like uh, Cesar Romero played the Joker in the Adam West show was like clown, Jack Jack Nicholson's was gangster, um, Heath Ledger's was psychopath, um, or went, was was you know the anarchist, the anarchist yeah. and then Jared Leto's like the um, psychopath, and they show Mark Hamill's and it said the Joker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, the um, I would say, though, a lot of this Joker, um, you know, kind of it does fit in line with Jack Nicholson's depiction. There is a more... A little bit. As opposed to gangster that, you know, was depicted by yeah, um, gangs Jack Nicholson. He's more of a gangster, more modern day, yeah, you know, but, swag. Yeah, but at least he has his pants pulled up all the way. Yeah. Um, and there are things about that that make me say, I don't know if I like that quite as much. It's a little bit uncomfortable for me. But at the same time, he did do some great things, like he has, you know, a posse of people to uh, attack and, um, mm -hmm. you know, break into places. Dressed up as like a panda and Batman. Cast, yeah, Ma Batman mask on. And that to me is just so hilarious. And we did see a couple opportunities like him using a iPad uh, with a stream. Uh, live video. Live video uh, to holding someone's wife hostage as a way to, you know, basically get what he wanted. Yeah, so that was cool. So we did see some of the dark tendency. Personally, though, I still felt the funny outweighed the dark and craziness in this Joker for this movie. And some of that is probably due to be it being cut out. But um, We'll find out. Yeah. To me, like, it was pretty good, but I still need to see more to actually know ultimately about this Joker. Yeah, I mean, there was a part where he's laying down laughing with a bunch of knives around him. And think myself, hey, it's uh, Angelina Jolie's knife fetish being shown on screen. <laughs> Was that like a duck honk or something? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he saw Harley Quinn getting dressed for the first time when he laughs. But <laughs> yeah, I was actually looking at that shot that we were just quoting there. Though, oh, and by the way, how about uh, 
him totally right before that making fun of uh, uh, Christian Bale's Batman. Oh, yeah. Going, part. where is she? Oh, yeah. And it's like <laughs> the guy comes in. He's in the apartment. And he gives the exact same look that Christian Bale did in The Dark Knight when he said, let her go. But he also says a quote from The Dark Knight with Batman says, instead of saying, where is she? It's, where is she? Yep. That was fantastic. I love that. Uh, <laughs> not Deadpool level, but still fourth wall breaking. Maybe it was unintentional, but maybe we have to ask him. <laughs> that, hey, uh, Jared Leto, I have a question about this shot in this movie. Were you purposely parodying the Dark Knight, or is that just pure coincidence mm-hmm. with your acting and maybe the camera angle was just that same coincidence? Yeah, yeah, that is a valid question. Um. Yeah, it, it'll definitely be interesting to see um, the extended edition of this, which I'm sure there will be. And honestly, to me, that's feeling, for better or for worse, like, you know, how Marvel movies became known for their after credits scene. I feel yeah. like DC, if they keep this up, may be known for their extended cut DVDs. <laughs> or Blu-rays and home video releases. Yeah. Because I don't know too many people buy DVDs anymore. That's true. Yeah, but the thing is that um, at least they have just one mid credit scene usually. It's not like Marvel, who some reason has their important stuff in the middle, but have their really forgettable and kind of funny, not really forgettable, but kind of not very necessary funny thing at the exact end. Wouldn't it make more sense to be the other way around where the funny thing was at the middle and then the serious thing was at the end? Yeah, uh, and it would actually be more worth the stay then, mm-hmm. I would say, if you do that. But I guess that way they're, you know, thinking, well, if someone does leave after the first one, they'll at least see the important thing. Still, though, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, what would you give this movie, Stephen? Well, I have really been thinking about this one, and I've been taking my impressions, um, you know, about this and weighing it against what has, you know, been said, what I perceive as legitimate criticisms, some that are not so legitimate. Like but, you say, Stephen, like uh, Jeremy Jans? Yeah. <sighs> Dickless the Clown. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I um, I really do think um, that, you know, and I'm not going to... Ultimately, I'm going to, you know, state my opinion, and I hope that uh, Rotten Tomatoes isn't going, all oh, this chit-chat's going to get you hurt right now. <laughs> but um, honestly, after seeing it um, through and comparing it um, with DC, Marvel, I think a fair grade for this is about... And 82%. Okay. I can understand that. Before I give my final thoughts on that, I just want to make a joke by saying, remember the part where they say, what if Superman breaks and lifts the, rips the ceiling off the White House and grabs the president? And I say... Who would stop him, they said? Yeah. I'm like, eh, I'd be fine if it was Hillary Clinton, but... Or Trump to me. Well, Donald Trump would probably build a wall of kryptonite around the White House, but... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, all right. So, and how about Batman? Yeah, Batman would probably just be like, okay. Uh, how about I save the day? It's not all about Superman. <laughs> well, yeah, he do like an actual real investigation, like the FBI. But anyway, <laughs> so um, my thoughts about this movie was that it was good. I mean, there were some kind of weak moments where it kind of did noticeably sl- slow down mm-hmm. for kind of character development which is kind of understandable but there are beats where it's like okay they probably could have done that better but there's stuff i'm like oh i really like the dialogue during this scene i like the interaction with these characters but at the same time i felt like there should have been more of it maybe in the home video release we'll get a lot more of that but yeah there are some characters that maybe they were very like useless like slipknot was pretty useless i think you know he was only purpose in the movie of the show what if one of them actually got their head blown off kind of thing Mm -hmm. and again it's maybe a slight spoiler but if you honestly see the trailers on that i mean the footage that they show of slipknot it's like yeah you know this guy is probably one 
it's definitely coming. not gonna make it. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I did like the performances. I liked, you know, Margaret Robbie. Margot. Um, yeah, but there's a T. Margot, 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 you. Oh, color MR. Margot, okay. I love you, you future waifu. Um, <laughs> I thought Wonder Woman was your future waifu, Gal Gadot. I'm I'm having a serious crisis in determining which of well, my waifus. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I'm going Mormon or something. I don't maybe, know. <laughs> well, maybe Miss Robbie, because uh, Gal Gadot's married and has a kid. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny she's listening to this like, I got to look him up and say, hey, can you watch this guy just in case something bad happens to me? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, Will Smith was good, and um, a lot of the other cast members. Jai Courtney did do a better job than I thought he was going to, which is, you know, props to him. I'm just going to let my wrath about him slide for this movie. So, and I did love how Killer Croc's makeup was very realistic. It wasn't just all CG the entire time. Mm-hmm. I mean, the movie did have good action. It's kind of like DC's Guardians of the Galaxy. I hope to see another one of these kinds of villain movies, which I've noticed is kind of a trend now with movies like Despicable Me and Maleficent and so on and so forth. So overall, I'd give Suicide Squad about three stars out of four. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty solid. Um, I do want to mention, uh, you know, before we sign off, though, it occurred to me, one reason, um, talking about the Joker's parts being cut, at least from Jared Leto's perspective, it occurs to me we may possibly not see them in the special edition of this film because of the looming Batman sequel, or prequel more than anything, that's going to you know, be directed we'll find by out. Uh, Ben Affleck. And written by him and produced by him. Yeah, I'm really interested in what he's going to do about it, because he's a good director. He directed movies like The Town and Argo. Both of those were good movies. But it's been also been rumored that it might be the Red Hood story. Hmm. So, you know, Joker's probably a guarantee to be in that. I want, But I want to really see more Batman-related villains. I actually yeah. want to see villains that they have done in the past. Maybe Joel Schumacher did something wrong with them. Maybe they can do it right. Like, they fix characters like Two-Face and Bane in the Nolan series. But I actually kind of want to see a new Riddler, Poison Ivy, and maybe a Mr. Freeze and Penguin. I was just and thinking so on. those. Yeah, like, I would like to see, um, you know, Bane, Scarecrow, Two-Face. I like uh, to see Clayface. Yeah, Clayface would be interesting, too. Man-Bat. Um, but that, I think, we almost are definitely going to see from the Batman vs. Superman. Little, yeah, that one clip. Yeah, clip they showed. So anyway, thank you for listening to this episode of Unscripted on NK Reviews. This is Tyler from NK Reviews. Mr. J, the Joker, a.k.a. Stephen Lawson Studios. And we hope you enjoyed this video, unless you're Rotten Tomatoes people or Jeremy Jans. But then you better get sweet talking me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe.